High inflation hurts gold because it means the Fed has to fight harder to win the inflation war. I've been saying no. It just proves that the Fed already lost the inflation war and inflation won. In today's video, Peter Schiff, founder, CEO and global strategist of Euro-Pacific Capital, gives a warning that the 2008 crisis was just the prelude to a larger sovereign debt crisis in the United States that may lead to a collapse of the US dollar. We got the CPI on Wednesday, and everybody expected the CPI to come out high. And we met those expectations. The consensus was for a 0.6% rise for the month, which is a big jump. That's a lot of uh, inflation in a single month. Uh, and that's exactly what happened. We, prices were up, according to the government, 0.6% for the month. But where the numbers were worse than expected was the year over year number. They were expecting 3.6 and we got 3.7. But what's more important to me than the 3.7 is the trend. Because two months ago in June, we were three. Last month, we were 3.2. This month, we're 3.7 or August. And based on what I'm seeing in the market, the September number could be even hotter than the uh, August number, or at least another big number, so that the year over year increase by next month could be close to four. Maybe we'll even have a four handle. But what's significant here is that we're moving up. Again, this guy was saying inflation is peaked and coming down. Well, no, it, it, it bottomed and it's, it's turned up and we're at 3.7. We're moving farther away from the Fed's so-called 2% target. In fact, by next month, we could be double the 2% target and headed in the wrong direction. Meanwhile, the Fed is pretty much out of bullets as far as rate hikes. I mean, if you talk to Wall Street, because again, Everybody is thinking one and done as far as the Fed. And so if inflation is headed back up and the Fed only has one more quarter point rate hike, that's not going to do anything. What difference is that going to make at this point? And we can't sell oil anymore out of the strategic petroleum reserve. So we're out of bullets there too. Uh, where's inflation going to go? It's going to go much, much higher. Now, the core also worse than expected. They were looking for a gain of 0.2. We got a gain of 0.3. That may not sound like much, but in terms of inflation, it is because A, it's 50% more than they thought. But this is just one month, right? So, you know, it's not the whole year. You're just looking at an increase in one month. And so that's a big number. The year over year core, though, came out in line at up 4.3, which is lower than the 4.7 from last month. But my bet is that the September number, I think the core rate is going to be higher than 4.3. So I think the core is going to start moving back up as well. The headline came down the most. And in fact, the headline started to drop first. And then the headline bottomed first. And now it's going up. And now the core is going to follow. But meanwhile, the core is supposedly what the Fed really cares about, right? Because food and energy are just a bunch of noise, according to the Fed. They want to look at when you strip it out. Well, when you strip it out, we never even got below four. Their goal is two. They want to have a core at two. And they didn't even come close. And now uh, and now we're at we're at uh, we're at four point three and rising. So this was bad news. The markets, you know, they were down. Um, but then they rallied. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't, the markets still don't get it. I mean, they're still like looking at it like it's okay. And it was interesting to me, the gold market, which initially sold off a bit, gold held up. In fact, gold was actually positive on the week, despite worse than expected inflation news on the CPI and the PPI, a rate hike out of the ECB. I'll talk about that again too. They, they hiked rates. Um, but all this did not hurt gold. Gold held up and gold stocks did even better. Gold stocks were up. Actually, yesterday, gold was down about 10 bucks and gold stocks were up two or 3%. Today, gold recovered those uh, that, that loss, was up about 12 bucks. So it closed the week around 1922, but gold stocks were up another two or 3% today. So they look like they bottomed. So maybe somebody is figuring this out finally, that higher inflation is good for gold. It's not bad for gold. 
the, the, the view is that high inflation hurts gold because it means the Fed has to fight harder to win the inflation war. I've been saying no. It just proves that the Fed already lost the inflation war and inflation won. And that's bullish for gold. It's actually bearish for the dollar. The dollar hasn't rolled over yet. The dollar was up a bit this week. Uh, not much, but it still managed to gain. But, you know, Paul Krugman came out on the week after these inflation numbers came out and basically on Twitter declared that the inflation war is over and uh, declared the, the, the government the winner, right? The victory. And he's saying it's so great because, you know, the Biden administration is just, you know, a bunch of geniuses. They pulled off the impossible. We, we won the war on inflation without any collateral damage to the economy. According to Paul Krugman, the economy is great and we've won the war on inflation and there's no recession. I mean, how wrong can one guy be? I think he's abused that privilege of being wrong. You know, I threw down the gauntlet. I challenged him to a debate. Of course, I knew he wouldn't accept because lots of people want to debate Paul Krugman and he won't debate anybody, right? He's got that Nobel Prize, you know, that he can fall back on. I mean, he can bring that prize to the debate, you know, if he wants to hold on to it for confidence. But I think most people without a Nobel Prize can figure out uh, that he's wrong. I mean, I agree with Krugman that the inflation war is over. I just disagree uh, on who won. I, I, I think inflation won. Uh, it's just that uh, the, the Fed hasn't officially surrendered, uh, but they're going to. And of course, when that happens, I mean, gold's going to go ballistic. But you don't want to wait for that to buy it. You want to head over to ship gold and buy your gold now and your silver uh, before this, this next breakout. Because when it moves, I am convinced it's going to be fast. And anybody who's trying to finesse this, anybody who's trying to time the market, well, I'm going to wait for a big sell-off. I'm going to wait until the Fed totally capitulates. I'm not going to buy my gold until they last rates down to zero and they're full-on QE. You wait for that. You could be paying $3,000 an ounce. For th- I don't want to do that. I'm confident enough that I know what the Fed is going to do that I'm going to place my bets before they do it. I don't have to see the Fed's hand to know what they're holding. Right. So I'm going to I'm going to put my chips on the table now uh, because you have much better odds. And that's what you know, I'm, I'm encouraging people. Same thing with your investment portfolio. Get out of U.S. stocks. Foreign stocks had a great day today. They did well yesterday across the board, uh, much better than the U.S. market. You know, I think uh, the U.S. market, again, to me, looks like it's toppy. There is a little bit of a, a last hurrah today uh, in the Nasdaq. Uh, with uh, ARM, ARM came public, big IPO. Interestingly enough, it closed negative on the day today, down 3.6% after hitting 69. I forget where the IPO price was. It had a big uh, debut yesterday, a big pop, huge valuation. But the fact that it closed negative on the day, I think is, is a big problem. We'll see if it goes below its IPO price next week. It easily could do that. Meanwhile, I'm looking at the NASDAQ was down one and three quarters percent today, closing near the lows of the day and down on the week. Um, the S&P, let me take a look at uh, how the S&P did on the week. It was also down today about 1.2 percent and down a little bit on the week. The, the NASDAQ did a, uh, a lot better than the, uh, than the NASDAQ. I mean, than the, S- the S&P did a lot better than the, than the NASDAQ. And it looks like the Dow did eke out a, a gain on the week. Not a big gain, but that's despite a near 300-point uh, drop today. But I think the foreign markets did a lot better than the U.S. market. And I think going forward, you got a rocky road because I am looking for continued rise in the oil price. Right From here, we could be at 100 very quickly. We could have another big spike up in bond yields, which is going to be very problematic for the market. Remember, I mentioned the ECB hiked rates to 4%. They're going to keep on hiking. You know, uh, if you listen to Lagarde talking about, you know, the, the ECB, we're going, to, we're going to be tight. We're going to be higher for longer. We need restrictive policies because we want to fight inflation. Well, she's just getting started. They're not even close to being restrictive yet at 4%. Rates need to be much higher in the Eurozone, and that is going to be a big problem as they go higher because there's a lot of debt in the Eurozone. But remember, when inflation was 1.5, 1.6, 1.7, what was the ECB saying? Going back to Mario Draghi, we're not close enough to 2%. 
We need 2%. In fact, they didn't say 2%. We need to be close to, but under 2%. So here you are at 1.7, and you're the, the chairman of uh, the, the European Central Bank. Inflation is 1.7, and you got interest rates negative. You're doing all this QE because you're saying 1.7 is not close enough to being just below 2%. Like this fool was trying to micromanage inflation and flooding the economy with money to try to move the needle from 1.7 to 1.9 something. And I kept saying back then, what if they overshoot? In order to move inflation needle up a tiny bit, they're risking blowing through 2%, which they've done. They're way above 2%. And now what are they going to do? Now they have the exact problem on their hands that I warned about that they didn't care about. But now they're claiming, yeah, we need 2% inflation. So we'll see how much longer they can hold on to that target. But that means rates are going a lot higher than 4% in the Eurozone. And Japan, I mean, who knows what's going to happen over there.